How are you? Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to Ambassador Digital Magazine Live. I'm Musa Jackson, and um, good to have you guys join us again for another week. Um, such a, 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 you know, love doing this show, love, um, love our guest uh, this week. Very special, very, very, very special show for me. Um, I have so many people that, you know, that I love to highlight. And this particular person is one of my favorite people. So um, I'm going to bring him out in a, in a few. Uh, so once again, thank you all for joining us tonight. And what's going on tonight? So we have, uh, let's see, it's, um, it's, I think, Fashion Week. Remember that? Remember that, guys? We were doing things live once upon a time. We were actually in venues watching shows. I guess now everything's virtual, but I believe it starts today and ends, I think it's a week, so obviously a week. So it's from the 11th to the 18th. Um, and so, uh, you know, I remember doing those shows once upon a time and definitely um, my guest tonight, we'll probably talk about that a little bit too later on. Um, so, uh, but it's been a, you know, the week began um, with the, you know, we're, we're, we seem to be losing a lot of our um, icons, people who were, I think the prior week we lost Cicely Tyson, and then this week we lost Mary Wilson, one of the co-founders of the legendary iconic group, The Supremes. Um, you know, it, it's interesting when that happens, um, because I, I mean, anyone of a certain age and, um, you know, the, the Supremes were just a part of our lives. Um, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, my parents, same, similar age, a little bit, probably my mom's. Um, older, but nonetheless, they were the the group, the female group of the '60s, and right along with uh, Florence Ballard, who passed away um, very early on in the '70s, and um, of course, the, the uh, one of the, uh, the the lead being Dinah Ross, the boss, and then there was Mary Wilson who was uh, sassy, the sexy one, they always called her. Beautiful, uh, Mary Wilson, and gave us so many hits, so many hits. I don't think they, I think there's a legacy of hits. There she is at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, so to, to, she's only 76 years old, which is not old to me. Um, and um, and she, she left us, left us too soon but left us with a musical legacy that will live on. So we say, we salute you. We salute you, Mary Wilson, the great Mary Wilson. Rest in peace. Um, we also saw the beginning of the impeachment trial. Hmm. We can talk about that. Um, I have uh, specific views on that. Um, it's a criminal trial to me of a man who is a criminal, 
who was our former president. Um, and uh, we've seen the Democrats have, have gone in. They've shown tireless videos of their, their opening has been um, impactful to a certain degree, brilliant in any other situation. Not this one because of the fact that you need 17 Republicans to convict the monster. I'm showing right now, we're seeing uh, one of the House delegates who actually brought receipts, we like to say. She came and she brought it, Stacey Plas Plaskett. I think that's how you say her name. Um, she's a Delta, she's fierce, she went in. In any other situation, um, I believe, you know, he would be behind bars after her. But once again, um, this is a situation that's not like the rest of us where uh, it was really brought out to me very, very distinctly where, succinctly where these are, this, you know, the, the Senate already, they already came in, the Republicans already came in with their minds made up to not convict him. So, you know, if you were normal, normal trial, if, if you had jurors that felt that way, they would not be sitting on the jury. But they're here, knowing that they're not going to convict this man, knowing that this man incited insurrection, he uh, incited a riot that will go down in history. Um, any chance I get, I will say he's the worst president ever. You know, never, ever to be applauded. I hope we all say that. I hope history will say that it should. My children, my grandchildren will look at him as evil, okay? As yours should. Nothing ever should be good to be said good about him. Even if he does get off, I feel like I won't say, it hasn't come to a conclusion. I, we can all keep our fingers crossed, but you know, this looks like the hand's already been played and that, uh, you know, but I will say this once again, she, as Stephen Rice, hi Stephen, she did that, she came with receipts, but again, you need 17. And um, they, were, they, they, they all sold their souls. So uh, regardless of what happened, they could have been killed, but it didn't happen. Five people died, or seven people died, I believe, uh, something like that. Um, but it doesn't matter. So um, we'll continue watching this impeachment fiasco go on. And um, two cops committed suicide uh, that were there. And um, I had something to read. One officer, um, a black officer, he was not there, took his life by video. It was on video uh, this week. And his name was Deputy Clyde Kerr. And why he was in relation to this, but it was in relation to the criminal justice system and how it really stacked against black people and people of color. And he's a person, he was a black man who was literally, there he is, who was just, just fed up with the system. And I'll read a bit of what he said. He talked, he called it demonic. Um, he said, I cannot abide by this no more. I'm not having anything to do with this nonsense anymore. If this feels right to you, then there is something wrong with you. That is the furthest thing from right. My entire life has been of service to others. You entrust me to safeguard your little ones. And I did that well. I passed security clearance in the military, but that allowed me to see the workings, the inner workings of these things. And it has just dawned on me that they really don't give a damn about us. That is the truth. That is the truth. I understand I have a tough job, but we signed up for this because when you deal 
with the bottom rung of society that does not give you the excuse to just do whatever you want. And that's what they're doing. And they're not being held accountable. And he killed himself, but he left this testimony. So this is, um, this is 2021. We are still in the midst of pandemic. We are still dealing with systemic racism. We do have a new administration that is dealing with certain things and I, and, I, and I think is trying to make progress. There's so much that they can do. They have to get through this trial um, so they can enact other things, uh, the stimulus package and other, and other things. But, um, you know, just a little insight of what's happening that, you know, even with the new administration, we're still dealing with the same crap. And uh, so here we are. And, um, you know, always got to keep a little inside how we feel over here. We try to keep it 100 with you. So listen, I'm very excited, <laughs> very excited about my, my guest tonight. Um, gosh, where do I begin? Uh, he's someone that um, I've known my entire career, which started as a model. And he would uh, blast onto the, the fashion scene, becoming one of the greatest black male models in history. He would then, you know, decide <laughs> to become a restaurateur and open one of the hottest restaurants in the 90s, Georgians, with people like Denzel Washington and Debbie Allen. Um, but that wasn't enough. <laughs> he would also then decide to become a painter, something he'd been doing since he was a child, but now he decided to follow that dream. And his work's been in exhibits, also in Denzel's home, as well as Blair Underwood, amongst other celebrities. And he, along with his beautiful wife, Gwen, are the owners of a top restaurant in New Rochelle. I hope you guys all go to it. I've been, and it's fantastic. It's called Alvin and Friends. I could not be more happy to welcome one of my dear friends, the Alvin Clayton Fernandez. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> wow, what an what an introduction. <laughs> you got one of Moose's introductions. <laughs> what an introduction. Oh my God. <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> is Who is that Jamaican? man now? <laughs> hey, hey, Musa, is he Jamaican? He's got a hundred jobs. <laughs> got it. He's not your trainee. You're training. Exactly. I'm close to Island, that, right? Caribbean, you know, you know how that goes. How are you doing? Close enough. Look at that I'm smile, well, man. <laughs> Look at that smile. Goodness gracious. Oh, my God. So, so, I'm blushing. My ears are warm. <laughs> wow. You, it's, it's so good to see you, Alvin. And thank good you so much. Man. Welcome to our show. We have a, 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 a wonderful surprise. Later on, I can't wait to show you. Um, I know, I'm, I'm excited. The cover reveal was incredible. Well, hey, we had, you know, we had to, we had to work on it a little bit, you know. We, <laughs> that face of his, guys, you know, it's, you know, don't tell him, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's, all, it's all lighting, it's all lighting. <laughs> oh, it's been lighting tricks for the past 45 years, man. 30 years, he's been lighting it just properly. Getting that beautiful glow and smile and you know, okay. So um, and I want to say something. To, so you know, people that may be coming on, I see, I say, hey, Crystal, I see you, Stephen, Trisha. Always like to say hi to people that are coming on. Um, is you know, started out. We both started out uh, around the same time as models back in in the early '80s. And, um, you know, and, and, and that would obviously do wonders, do amazing things for both of our lives. I don't think either one of us even knew 
where we were going to go, right? Because right. I think in one in certain respects, I can think about you know our generation. It was education that was like at the top of the heap. You know what I mean? Modeling almost seemed a little frivolous because it wasn't. You know, we didn't have any. You know, you know, Alvin, we didn't have a whole lot of of you know people before us. You know what I'm saying? There was a, a nice handful of very well known, yeah, right. But it was still so few. It was, yeah. But we you know, but we have to be. You know, we still we stand on other people's shoulders, and, we and do. I do have to say that we were we were fortunate. The, the, the group that actually came before us that really started it, they were classy people as well, yeah. and because of them, you know, we were able to continue. Right. Um, you know, the tradition of excellence in what we were doing. But, you know, right. people like like Renal White and, and and Charles Williamson and, you know, Rashid Silvera and, and ben Lawson. Yeah, those those guys, yeah. I mean, those guys, you know, they 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 had a huge struggle, I guess, even more so than we did. Right. Um, but we we stood on their shoulders and we took it to the next level and passed the torch, you know, which is a good thing. Absolutely. And, I, and, and, and and that was really what I was trying to say was that, you, you know, we can talk about a handful of those models that really were instrumental in our careers and really had to really, um, you know, shoulder so much of, 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 you know, the black image, black male image yeah. on so very few shoulders in comparison when well, I'm just talking, Alvin, and you know what I'm talking about. You know, we look at, you know, the roster when we looked at our boards in terms of just, you know, the one to 50 ratio at some points with yeah. agencies. <laughs> oh, God. So, but, but you know what? And we're going to talk about that. But I want people to know a little bit about, you know, Alvin prior to modeling, you know, what, what really kind of, um, you know, you talk about, you know, you're from Trinidad and I've been to Trinidad. It's a beautiful Trinidad and Tobago. A beautiful island um, with lovely people. Talk about a little bit what that was like. What was that like for you, man? You know, it's 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 like one of the best times of my life. I mean, and I I give thanks for actually being born in Trinidad because the foundation for who I am started there. You know, when my mom came to the United States, my grandmother took care of us. But you know, having that root of like just being free. You know, growing up with black doctors, black lawyers, black presidents, you were, I never felt as a second class citizen anywhere. So mm -hmm. when I came to this country, I knew I came here as an immigrant. And the great promise of America is like, you know, if you come as an immigrant, you can do anything that you want to do. And so that was my desire. So my whole thing was if you put the work in, you'd get the results. And right. You know, I never saw myself as a second class citizen and I never treated myself that way. And I, I just, you know, just kept it going, man. And, yes. you know, and this is this is a picture of me with my grandparents. Oh, wait, <laughs> you, could you bring it up closer to the screen? Put it closer so we can say, oh, wait, you know what? Uh, is that gonna be, that's, oh, look at you. <laughs> You were you were short once. <laughs> I know. And see, I thought you came out tall. There was all the Statue of Liberty was already in the background, you know. So wow. so I was destined to come here and and do whatever it is I do. But no, but you know, just being there and and just having that base and that foundation to like feel that you know what you can do whatever you need to do in this world. All you have right. to do is put the work in was right. like a great thing for me. And I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I I was born where I was supposed to be born. I'm so happy for that. And so you come to you come to the States at around 15 high school age, right? Yeah. And, and and I don't think people know this, but you were uh, a, a, basically a soccer champion almost, whiz. Yeah. Well I, I I went to I went to John Carroll High School in DC. And um, because I, you know, I grew up playing soccer, so I had that advantage. Uh, so I, I started on the soccer team there. I was all met soccer in Washington, D.C. Then I got a full scholarship to Mount St. Mary's University. I went there, um, was all American there, all Maryland and all of that. Got drafted by San Diego, except it was the year that the NASL folded, which was the Outdoor Soccer League. 
And a friend that I had gone to college with had told me that he thought that I could model. And so I had a degree in secondary English education and psychology, wasn't ready to teach at the time. So I said, you know what, let me just try the modeling thing. I asked him if he think that his agency would be interested in me with the Wilhelmina modeling agency at the time. I came to New York and actually Wilhelmina, they gave me the whole spiel about how difficult it is for black models. And, but they said they were going to give me a try and you know, the rest was history. So, right. so it's so funny because this could have, anybody watching this could have been a lot different had it not folded. Yeah. He could have been like the Pele. <laughs> <laughs> He would be like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of like supermodel. So um <laughs> I would have been super I would have been super goalkeeper. But Musa, there's a story that you and I share. Well, you know, a story that, that that we have to let people know about. I right? know. So I started or you started? Uh well you 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 start. You, you tell you tell how your part happened. Okay, so here's so here guys, this is where this happened. So as you heard, he got with Wilhelmina, right? And that, okay, so when he got with Wilhelmina, right, yours truly had just got with Pauline's agency. I was the first man with Pauline's. I was discovered, how did I get with Pauline's agency? Um, I was discovered by GQ Magazine, which was unheard of. So the editor of GQ Magazine saw me out at a club one night and was like, you know, we're looking for the, the new black American face. I think Maravon Peoples was there. I was there. They said, who's this guy? It was me. I did GQ. I'm with Pauline's agency. I'm doing, you know, because I'm with Pauline's, the black guy, there's only one black guy at the agency. It's me, Vogue. Everybody's opening up their doors. Uh, I'm a kid. So I'm on hold for my, my, my debut with GQ magazine. Pauline had had started this uh, photographer named Arthur Elgort at the agency was a beautiful model from I think she's from sweet uh Louise Viant, who was a black girl she's she Dutch, just, she's Dutch, yeah. she's Dutch, she's Dutch but she literally had just come to come to America it was uh me <laughs> and Louise it was a it was it was it was uh you know this was a home run for me it's my hometown. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm I'm setting this I'm setting this up, okay. So let me let so and let me come in. Sudden, here we go. Finish the story. <laughs> so first of all, so every every male model wants to go to GQ magazine, right? When they come in, I mean the agency. That's one of the first places they try to send you. And I had seen models with great portfolios that weren't working for GQ, so I never wanted to go. And I waited for like about six months. I got my portfolio in, in place. And then I waited until I felt comfortable with looking at my photos to be able to present it to GQ. And so I come into lunch one day and my agent back then was Mar Martha. One of them was Martha Pacione. So I walk up to Martha. I said, Martha, you know what? I think I'm ready to see GQ. And she made a call there right at lunch. And I went over to GQ. I had a nice interview with them, but probably like about five minutes, they looked at my portfolio. And then I come back to the agency and she says to me, you know, how, how did it go? I said, we had a nice interview. She goes, must have been because they just book you for a job tomorrow. And my, and that was apparently my job. <laughs> I'm on hold waiting. I, I come into the agency. I'm, I'm on hold. And it was like two days in advance and I come into the agency and they're like, um, by the way, you've been released, but you're going to do Mademoiselle. You're going to do Mademoiselle. And I'm like, I'm like, released from what? They're like, you're released from, from DQ. And then I was sort of like, I was like, okay. And I said, well, who got the job? They said, um, it's a new guy. His name is <laughs> Alvin Clayton Fernandez. <laughs> I'm sorry, Musa. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> anyway, with that said, with that said um, Alvin, from that point, I remember that so vividly, obviously. And I, what, I, what I loved about that, um, quite frankly, and I'm going to give you the other side of this, okay, from my side. Because when that happened and I heard about you, 
never in my brain did I think like, okay, damn it, he got my job really. Matter of fact, a part of me was like, well, who is it? What does he look like? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when I saw you, I said, like, oh right, my right. God, he's so good looking. Of course he got oh, the job. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> but no, and, and, and you know what's so funny? And Alvin will attest to that. After that, he was like my big brother. Yeah. We would see each other out, clubs, you know, whenever we run into each other, and it was always love. I, and we were both working models. And, and then so we both ended up being the only two men that Pauline ever represented. That's right. Because then go. I was with Pauline's for a while as well. And, you know, we, you know, we were the with two guys. You were like my younger brother. And, yes. you know. <laughs> I was a younger, you know, not yeah. as cute version. Oh, <laughs> I'll take it though. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> so listen. So here we are. There he is. Look at that. In action. In action, guys. We're all okay. You know what? Here's the thing. We talked about this earlier, um, Alvin, uh, about you know our predecessors, people we looked up to, Renal, Renny, and yeah. the rest of the gang, and the rest of the gang. When I came in. I remember Mario saying to me, hey, you, you're, you're taking my place. I'm going off to Hollywood. I'm doing a film with Clint Eastwood. I was like, okay. I was at a nightclub. Mario and B was yeah. take, he said, take it from here, kid. And you know what? You know what the funny thing is? I actually, I did one of Mario's last, Mario's last official shoot. We did a shoot for EM Magazine. Okay. And he, he talked to us about going out to Hollywood and that was one of his last photo shoots that he did right. as a model. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like 19. Think about it, guys. When you're thinking about us in those days, we're kids. We were 19 with this huge, huge responsibility. Yeah. Because when we arrived in the 80s, it was a new regime. Yeah. New, new, listen, new faces, new girls. You were working with Louise and Gail, Gail O'Neill. That's right. Those are my girls. With, those are your girls. I worked with Kirsty Bowser and Karen Alexander. Yeah. More often. But I also worked with Gail and worked with um, Louise as well. Yeah. But those were my two, and those were kind of your two. Yeah. And so it was a new, and Veronica Webb, and it was a new era of models. It's yeah. funny. We were, I was going to bring this up later, but this was an event that I did. And this is later on in both of our careers after we had already been established models. And so- That was a fundraiser that you did for, was it for AIDS or something, I think? No, it was for Hurricane Hugo. It was for- Oh, no, um, Hugo, that's right, Hugo, Hugo, that's right, yeah. And everybody came out. Everybody yeah. came out. Do you remember the little kid in that show? Uh, you know, I can't remember- um, who, Remember the little girl? It, uh, the, uh, you know what, um, from the Cosby show? Or what that's right. She comes up to the show. She's like, she was like three years old. She says, "Hi, I'm going to do the Cosby show." I'm like, Who's <laughs> "I think she did okay for herself, right?" Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so anyway, but but, but um, I was going to say to you, Alvin, you had you know when you're doing GQ and you're doing all those things, you know, all of the doors open. For you, what was let, let's just talk a little bit of let people know what a little bit like what that was like for you back in the eighties into the nineties, but really in the eighties, um, really being to me, you were, you know, you were you were the one. Well, you know, at that, at that moment, dude. First of all, it was like it was kind of surreal after when I first found out that I got the the GQ booking right right, right after apparently. Like I went in and basically they booked me. Mm -hmm. And so the very next day I'm working, I, first of all, I researched this guy, Arthur Elgort <laughs> and finding out that he is like shoots covers of, um, of Vogue magazines and been working with all these amazing people. And I'm looking at the people that have gone before me in GQ, you know, mm -hmm. they had, um, it was always that GQ look, you know, that like, like someone just killed your dog kind of look. Right. <laughs> and, right. Um, so, <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I'm shooting with Arthur Elgort. I'm shooting for GQ. Am I supposed to give the GQ look? You know, that that stern blue magnum, magnum steel look, right? And so I'm like, you know what? My portfolios were mostly big smiles and 
I mean, I'm an affable guy. That's who I am. And I was like, they saw my portfolio and they're booking me. So I'm just going to be myself in front of the camera. And so the first shoot I did, I was just like, I, I was Alvin. I smiled when I needed to, you know, I gave all different looks or whatever. Louise was so beautiful and so mm -hmm. nice to work with. It was like a really great experience. Yeah. We had a great day shoot down in, in uh Tribeca area, you know, and I come back to the agency. So they said to me, like, how did things go? I was like, Oh, it was such a fun day. It was like surreal. I said, I hope they liked what they got. And uh, she said, well, you know what? They obviously did because they booked you again tomorrow. And the the photographer was uh, was Eric Toscani. Oh, Toscani. I and love Toscani him. shot all of those, the Benetton. That was that's actually right. our first shoot with GQ for with right. Louise, the, the picture that's up right now. That's that was right. the Arthur Elgort shot. That's it. But it was with Toscani. And, you know, it was another great shoot. It was like, he's this photographer that loves you to be very animated and things like that. So I was, you know, I was doing my thing again, big smiles. I worked with Grant Carradine, who was like, he was like in GQ, like almost every month, another top model back then. Right. And, uh, you know, as faith would have it, they were supposed to be two separate issues. And I don't know what happened, but they came out being in the same issue of GQ. And so here I had like eight full pages in GQ magazine. Back then, that was like unheard of for a black model. And basically that, that made my career. I went from, you know, working here and there, whatever, to like my charts. Charts are like, you know, jobs, options and stuff on you for being like three months full with, with options from clients wanting to use me. And kind of that's, that's kind of how I got started. So, you know, it was a lucky start looking after me there. God yeah. blessings, you know? Yeah. Those were times when, um, like you said, when, especially in those days, everything that was, uh, pretty much everything that was, that we did, it was always a big deal. Yeah. Because it was, I remember when I, w I did just work with Toscani for Mademoiselle and it was like, you know, you, you just don't think about the magnitude of at the time, because really what people don't understand is that this was a job and you went to work, right? And, but our job was based on getting more work with <laughs> being competing for work. Yeah. And I think once you became a well-known model, you know what I mean? Like I was put on the A-list for M Macy's and JC Penney's. So I worked every week. And that was always the bread and butter. And I know talking to you, that was one of the beautiful things is when you had friends like you, we would see you. We would say, Alvin's working, this one's working. And, and, and that's the way it was back in those days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and we didn't always, what people don't know, which we'll talk about, is that I knew you, we knew our girls, but we didn't all work together. That's what you <laughs> to understand. We didn't all, it wasn't I, like, right, there was certain times that, oh, do you know, I said, no, I never worked. I never, I never personally worked yeah. with um, a whole lot of black models because I- It didn't exist. I mean, because, you know, part of the thing was, there was like one, we, most jobs that we did, were you were, we were probably the only black face on the job for most of the times. I mean, in, in the 25 years, my first part of my career that I had, you know, I was blessed enough to have a 25 year career. I could count on my hand how many time I've worked with another ma black male models, probably maybe three or four times, to be yeah. honest with you. It was always just that one. I mean, and you looked in the catalogs and you saw the, the um, reflection of that. You'll mm -hmm. see, you know, six, seven, uh, you know, Caucasian guys and you had the, the one black guy, you know? I mean, in agencies, even agencies back at that time, it was like, you'd go in and they had a, you know, a spectrum of, of black models, but each one represented a certain thing. So you had a degree of blackness that agencies had represented. 
and you would hear them say, oh, oh, you know, we already have your type or this or whatever. I mean, and I understand it because it was protecting the models that they did have because the work was so far and, and few between for a lot of black models. Yeah. I was very blessed to be like, literally, I worked like almost every week, you know, um, mm -hmm. which is a rarity as you, as you know, but you know, I, 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 I worked for almost every catalog that there was. And, and then I did my editorial and I did ads, I did TV commercials. So I was like very fortunate, but I always would encourage other models to, to get into the field. And I would bring people to my agency, other black models. And they would be like, what are you crazy? I, I mean, <laughs> but I was like, you know what, if we didn't take them, somebody else might take them. So they might as well be where we are. And, mm -hmm. you know, the agency that gave me a chance, get something out of it as well. And so, because I always figured what was going to be for me was going to be for me. So I was never intimidated. And also I started at a time when I was finished college. So mm -hmm. I never let models stress me out, modeling stress me out. I always felt, you know what? I had my education to fall back on. Mm -hmm. Even when I started, I said, I gave myself two years. I said, at the end of two years, if I can't make a really good living off of modeling, I didn't want to just be a model to say I was a model. I wanted to be working and, and being able to save to, so I can do something else down the line. Yeah. So for me, I, I never took any stress. I never was freaked out about whether I worked or not. Right. Because I, I, at that time, I was the only person I had to take care of as well. So there right. was no huge responsibility. And I always knew that I would do well. So with whatever I did. So I never stressed on the modeling thing. But, but I was blessed enough and fortunate enough to have a great career with it. You know, it's interesting that you say that. I Knowing, you know, people that are tuning in, um, I, I can attest knowing Alvin, as long as I've known you, you've always had your head on the shoulder where a lot of us models, listen, we were doors opened and we had this incredible life. And, you know, when you were at the top tier in this business, it just felt like it was going to go on pretty much forever. And so, especially, you know, how we were treated, especially at these agencies. Um, but I will say this, because I had, you know, I did 10 years in the business from 83 to about 93. And then I took a detour. And I remember around, might have been early 90s, something like that. I, I, I think it might have been Cynthia Bale or somebody. Um, and I might have just got back from LA. It's, oh, by the way, you heard about Alvin? I said, what? And he said, you know, we opened a restaurant. I'm like, uh huh? I went, oh, what? And they said, yeah, you opened a restaurant. And I and, and I'd already heard, here's the funny part. I'd, heard, I'd already heard about the restaurant, but I, I knew of it from like, the people that were associated, the celebrities that were associated with it, right? right. I didn't know that you were part of it, but the, the restaurant was in Los Angeles and it was George's. Talk about how that came about. So I'm working with Gail O'Neill, my, my one of Great I was with my, my GQ wife. And um, <laughs> so we're in a Macy's job and Gail says to me, she's like, so Alvin, what do you think you're gonna do after modeling? And I knew like being off the regular workforce, I had to create something for myself. I knew how to cook. When I first started modeling, I worked as a waiter. I actually liked that um, industry. And so mm -hmm. I said to Gail, I said, you know, maybe I know how to cook and, you know, I like restaurant touring. Maybe I'll do a restaurant or something. And she said, you know, my boyfriend is a restaurateur and his name is Brad Johnson. Brad and Johnson. so Brad, uh, Gail introduced me to Brad yeah. and, and Brad was about, to do Georgia in LA. So he was the one that really knew all the celebrities and the whole thing. So we met, he took a liking to me. He asked me if I wanted to invest with them, I did. And so I learned back of the house restaurant touring from Brad and his father, Howard, rest his soul. Was... And so that's kind of how I got into the restaurant business, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and and here, so, <laughs> cause you guys, are, you really are getting a behind the scenes uh, uh, moment because, you know, when you go from one thing, it's funny. What I love, I'll tell you what I loved about this, uh, uh, um, Alvin, uh, uh, you know, New Howard from the cellar, people that right. are out watching. So yeah. Howard Johnson, uh, you know, had the cellar of the Upper West, Upper West Side. His son, uh, Brad Johnson, would go on to be one of the great restaurateurs of all time. 
um, who would then be your mentor in that sense yeah. for restaurants, right? Yeah. Um, but you know what's interesting about about this is that white guys, the white models, had opened Live Bait and Coffee Shop. Yeah. I was so proud of you that we, one of our own was following suit and opening up a restaurant. People don't understand that, that how important, and it wasn't about us against them. That's not my point, but that the fact that, you know, the entrepreneurial sense of going from just not being a model, but also being an entrepreneur and, and taking really taking control of your destiny. And I, and I really loved hearing this. I was in Los Angeles, uh, no, sorry, in New York, working um, in film. And so when I heard that, I was like, go Alvin. <laughs> Thank um, you. you know that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And, and, I feel the love. <laughs> you know, and so talk about that. So, so now you're in Los Angeles. You know what, tell you know what, why don't you tell them about, cause you know, you're, when you're in, 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 in George's, which was the celebrity hangout guys, okay? Denzel Washington and Debbie Allen were, were co-owners of this spot. So talk- yeah, Norm Nixon. Norm Nixon, right? So yeah. tell us that one night, um, you know, you know, where you just had to kind of pinch yourself. Let them hear that story. Uh, well, you know, so we, Georgia was like the place for like Hollywood, but it definitely was the nucleus for black Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the, the, the times I remember us having such an amazing evening, I was like, Here's this kid from Trinidad. You know, if I was five years old and someone told me this was going to be my life, I'd be like, yeah, right. You know, so we're, it was Academy night when Denzel was actually nominated for um, Malcolm X, uh, which he didn't win. I think Al Pacino won it that night because uh, for a scent of a woman, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, we had this after we had an Academy Award party at the restaurant and the party's over and, you know, Restaurant tours after they're done, they, they hang out with their friends and they sit down or whatever. And I'm at a table with uh, with Forrest Whitaker, Lawrence Fishburne, Denzel Washington, uh, Julia Roberts is with us, Kevin Hooks, Brad Johnson, Wesley Snipes, and myself. And just having conversations like you and I are having the conversations. And I'm like, this is my life, you know? I was like, this this is kind of surreal. These are people that, you know, you see on the screen and stuff, and here you are, here I am just hanging with them, and and it's all cool, and it's fun, and I'm a restaurant own, owner, and I'm living my best life, you know? So that that was one of the, the most memorable um, nights at the restaurant that I remember. So you have this incredible restaurant and you're, um, you know, that's going well. But then all of a sudden you add a little something extra to this, to this souffle, this menu over here. Okay, supermodel, restaurant tour. <laughs> <laughs> then, listen, hey guys, hey, listen. Then I get another call. <laughs> cause, cause what they don't understand, I'm letting, I'm letting them all in on this, so it would be, I might have got a call from, um, um, it might have been Gail, or it might have been Trace Kemble, who was her cousin, or it might have been um, Derek Harry. It was a small group of us. I said, oh, did you yeah. hear? Did you hear? I said, did I hear what? Did I hear what? And I said, Alvin. I'm like, <clears throat> Alvin? What about Alvin? He said, well, you know he's a painter. I said, what? What? No, no, no. Another job. <laughs> really good. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, everybody, you know, if, if you know, I was a painter, you know, <laughs> I was a painter. <laughs> and then I actually, then I started to, then I saw your work. There you are in your home painting. And I said, what the hell? You could have easily been like, you could have just been a painter <laughs> and did well, <laughs> which I love. So talk to me. You always, Alvin, did you always, I mean, because I didn't know. Listen, once again, 
I knew you as a model when you when we start together. Then the restaurant, I never knew that you painted, and I didn't know you painted this well. Did you always want to be a painter, though? Had you always had you well, had that? I, I always loved art as a child. I always loved art, and I I would always draw. And I had a cousin that you know, by the name of Michael, that was like a really amazing artist, and he would draw. He did a lot of cartoons and stuff. But he, he was really talented, and so I'd always ask him. I was like. I, his my nickname for him was Smiley. He would say, "Smiley, come on, man, show me how to do this," you know. And I would draw, and I always would would draw. Um, back then, you know, Michael Jackson was always on the cover of Right On magazine, so I try to draw Michael, and you know, because he was our our idol, our hero. We always wanted to be little <laughs> Michael Jackson. I had my afro and everything else. <laughs> um, but I, you can't tell your parents in the Caribbean that you want to be an artist, you know, they'll tell you get a job. So anyways, I was in Paris and I went to Musée d'Orsay and I fell in love with Matisse's work, which the painting that you have up right now is kind of a, a take on the Matisse dance. Mm. And I went to Musée d'Orsay, I absolutely, I fell in love with his work. And so for like six months, I just kind of taught myself how to paint. I copied his paintings. And then I started branching off doing family members and friends because I could draw, I, I, I had a knack for it. And I was able to kind of like put things together. It didn't look great, but it was good enough to pass, right? And so I continued doing it. It, was, it became like a passion. I had, I had right. an apartment, a loft on 10th Street and 2nd Avenue. And for like two years, I painted. And I had paintings all over the wall. And uh, one of my uh, agents, um, M.L. McCarthy, came to my uh, my loft for dinner one night and she was like, wow, these are really good. And she said, you know what? I have a friend, her name is Lee Arthur. She has a, a gallery in Soho. I'd like for her to take a look at your work. And so Lee comes to my house. She, she sees the paintings and she was blown away. And she said, you know what? I've got to give you a show. So she gave right. me a show. It was like two months later. Um, the show is up. Elsa Clinch, um, that used to have CNN House of Style, mm -hmm. was doing a, a segment on models, and I was one of her feature uh, because one of her um, one of her producers had come to my show, and so she featured the art as part of the story that she did on my modeling career, and it became a career of its own. People started because CNN is played all over the world. So people started calling me and say, oh, where can we see your art? Where can we buy it or whatever? And that's kind of how it became a career. I mean, and it, it's my, if I was to choose one thing that I would do, it would be my art. It's, it's just like a passion. I paint almost every day and it's become, you know, something uh, of a career by itself. I did the, the um, artwork for the movie, The Best Man Holiday, um, you know, and okay. I've been collected by a lot of, really cool people. So that's, that's, that's how I got it. They're really, really, really cool. But anyway, <laughs> but I will say this. I want to, you know, and, and, and please guys do, do check out his work. Um, a lot of it is at an amazing, his amazing restaurant, Alvin and Friends. But I have to, as time is moving and I could talk to this man all day, is I have to bring out the, the, uh, the person who he shares his life with, he uh, has uh, his children, his beautiful children with, um, they have incredible children. They're not children anymore, they're grown ups. <laughs> uh, you know, gosh, but they'll always be our kids, right? And um, right. his beautiful, gorgeous wife, mm -hmm. his partner in crime. There, there she, she is. is. <laughs> Gwen, 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 Gwen. Oh, by the way, Crystal, Crystal's on here. She says, hi. Crystal says hey, hi. Crystal. To oh my God, my <laughs> and we're going to say hi to everybody. I see you guys. Trust me. Gwen. Gwen. You come Gwen. in. I see you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait. Okay, so we got to share this. You got to um, knock, knock him out the way a little bit because I just want to say hi to you. Okay. Um, beautiful. You know, you, you guys are so incredible. Um, and, and by the way, happy pre-Valentine's Day to both of you guys. Thank was, you. Okay. Yeah. Yay, look at that. <laughs> look at that, guys. Gold, <laughs> gold. Um, <laughs> so talk to us about, you know, just coming together, 
raising a family, running a business, and this man. I'll let you go. That's you. Okay. <laughs> well, I met Alvin. Um, oh my God, we celebrated our. This is 26. way time. We go. We have a long marriage, but we've known each other for thirty-one birthdays. <laughs> Does that make sense? Or maybe it's 30 birthdays. Sorry. It's 30 birthdays. It's an anniversary of the 30th birthdays. That we have. <laughs> so we met like we were really young. And um, I think when I met him, uh, I you know that feeling where you feel like you know somebody, but you don't know how they know him. And then they kind of go, uh, well, you know, I do a little modeling. And I thought, oh. <laughs> so I go to the <laughs> Hudson newsstand and um, I pick up... Um, I think it was Essence Magazine. And I'm like, oh my God, he was like in three or four pages. He was on an ad. And I was like, oh no, this is going to be weird. Then I picked up the Glamour Magazine that I had in my bag. He was in the, it was the Valentine issue. And then um, I'm walking and I'm like, wait, he really is. I'm like, oh my God, he really is a model. And I walk down the street and I'm kind of holding my head and I look up and what is on the biggest billboard? <laughs> This mug. <laughs> so, needless to say, I was like, "Hey, you know what? Let me just let me figure this one out." Because he was a little bit too cute for for me, you know. <laughs> like, I yeah, I was like, "Wow." Um, the first time I'd seen him out, he was with a supermodel. That made sense. Me, I didn't quite make sense, but oh, yeah. we had such a good time laughing about who knows what. He t tells great jokes, and. Right away, he kind of had that old, um, old school, like that real men chivalry thing that I thought like a lot of new men were progressive guys were lacking. He had it and it was deeply embedded. And I love that. That was one of the things that set him apart from the pack was how much he, forget about how cute he was. That part was okay. That was check the box. <laughs> but that's not why, you know, you get too serious with the man. Um, there are other things. So I will say that he has been a great um, partner for me in terms of a great friend. He's been supportive of whatever I needed to do. We we raised our kids just, you know, it's it like always a hustle. We really, I feel like we really didn't know everything we were doing, but we seem to do okay. The third, one's, gradu one's graduated, one's about to graduate next year. So we, we got three coming out of school. And then the other part was, when he decided he wanted to do this restaurant, I was you know, like, well, the kid's got to be a little bit older because that's a big commitment. I, I knew what that would mean. And uh, God kind of kind of guided that ship. So as the youngest one hit 10, that's when he started to go in this restaurant thing. And as much as he could do the front of the house and the rest, there was so many things underneath that needed a lot of care. And that's where I kind of picked up the pieces. So we've been partners that way. I have other things that I do long before I met him that carried over. And so we really kind of just let each other, we let, we let each other have our lives, but we don't make that the focal, if that makes sense. Yes. So I think that's why the years have all, passed. All the things that I hate to do, and not she probably true. hates to do them as well. No, she does not them. True. <laughs> not true, because he still takes care of the trash and stuff. So yeah. Um, but I mean, he's a great cook, so I didn't have to do that. But I would say, you know, the thing with Alvin is um, we both have kindred spirits for the arts. We both loved uh, our friends and we like to show them that love. So there was a match. And then I think, I don't know, you know, one year turned into the next. And before you know it, it rolls into the five year and then the 10 year. And, and then here and, we are. And here we are. <laughs> So I mean, do not ask how old we is. <laughs> well, we met as babies. No, we were babies. Um, yeah. in, in kindergarten, right? But, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think you know, we're still we're still very busy. We have a lot happening. You just it's this is just almost the beginning of the next chapter. A lot yeah. happening. Well, listen, the next chapter is about to happen in, in about one minute because I can say that I'm so happy to work with you guys. Um, Alvin, as your friend, I've known you most of your life. I just thought about that. Yeah. Almost 40, 40, <laughs> almost, no, no longer than 40 years. Almost 40 years. Wow. Okay. I can say you lucked out, kid. 
<laughs> I did. And then the jackpot. She's gorgeous. She's smart. She's great mom. Come on. Your partner. Wow. I, I, I got lucky. Oh, no. You hit the jackpot. I, I've been uh, very lucky. Yes. Hit the jackpot. So, anyway. <laughs> I am a great mom. She did, too. She did. For that. Okay, you both. Uh, I don't know how else. <laughs> but, else means, but I would tell Paul, Paul, this is that time. We have Frank, the photographer, waiting in the ring. And hey, Steve, Frank. the artist, waiting in the wing. As we awesome, first of all. I got to go. Our cover reveal, our cover reveal Let us of see. Drum Alvin Clayton Fernandez for Ambassador Digital Magazine. He is our Renaissance man. Bring it out, Paul. <laughs> that was a good lead in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Frank. Here we go. Here we go. How are you? Oh! oh, who is that guy? Woo! Oh, wow. We wanted to bring it back to me. That's my guy. That's you. Wow, guy. that is so. Frank is such an amazing it photographer, man. The magician. It looks amazing. It looks the You're color. An amazing uh, model. Wow. Boy. I'm going to shut up. Go ahead, Frank. Wow. No, I said you're an amazing model to work with, and I'm really happy to be a part of the team, and it looks fantastic. Woo! Thank you. That wow. is that. Drum roll. This that, is is, that, is, that is beautiful. Woo! Hot. That is, that is, that is really beautiful. Thank Woo. you. You guys did me right, man. <laughs> so Musa, what does your cover look like? Did you you a pretty good looking man? I, want to I told Musa he has to do he one be, of him. You know what? Bit. We'll get to that one day. <laughs> don't wait too long. I want to be. I'm still trying to grow into it. I want to be the guest editor on it. You will. I want to be guest. I want to be guest editor when you do your cover. So, so Did you words, guys hear you that? I will style you, and I will be your interviewer. Yeah, he'll interview you. Okay, that's a bet. That's a bet. All right, you heard you it here, Ambassador Magazine, and, folks. And, and, we'll, and we'll get Frank to shoot it. And Frank will shoot it. Okay. Yeah. So listen. Absolutely, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen, did you want to say hi? Stephen, can we get him in? Oh, where's Stephen? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can add him in. Stephen. Oops. No. There you go. Hey. Hi. Am I there? Hey. 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 <laughs> How's it going, guys? How great. Are ya? Oh my God, great. Your make your makeup looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a big compliment yeah, was, coming from you. <laughs> the, the glam uh, squad. No, it was it was a great shoot. I gotta say the, the team was awesome. We had a great dinner after. Yeah. Um, you know, it was really, it was really, really nice. Yeah. Frank and the and videographers. The food. Where, where's Frank our videographers? And I Huh? Frank and I talked about the food. It was amazing. <laughs> amazing. I've been bragging about the food, and I hope everyone watching, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, I saw Mikel said, what's up? He said, cover, boom. Trisha, <laughs> Gary, Crystal, Blake said, work it out, man. Courtney Douglas. <laughs> went through, um, um, uh, we go through this. Um, hi, uh, beautiful. So nice. right, Crystal. Um, 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 all this good stuff, guys. Um, Sean, oh, I, boy, I see you. Tara Fitzgibbons um, is there as well. Um, but listen, every anyone watching tonight, really, do yourself a favor and make a reservation. Give them a call. If you're in a city, it's literally just a 20-minute ride on the metro up to, uh, up to New Rochelle to go to Alvin and Friends. We had the best time. It's the best service, the great food. Um, the piano was going, the guy who does it, uh, the music was amazing. The ambiance. One thing I love about, and there's a cover, but one thing I love about you, uh, you guys, you both, even though Gwen is around, she's in the back, handling business, always making sure everything comes out. I love how you really love your customers. Absolutely. You really, you really give them love. Don't forget well, to mention the rum punch. The rum punch. <laughs> can only get there. All right, uh, listen, to anybody coming out from New York City, we Go have ahead. a special that we do. If you show us your train ticket, we buy your first co house cocktail on us. Or or can we say it here now? 
if anybody watching, if you're, uh, if you say Ambassador Digital Magazine, you get the That's first right. cocktail. We That's said that cocktail. first cocktail is on us. First cocktail. Yep. <laughs> There's Brad Johnson. Oh, Brad. Oh, Brad. Doesn't have enough jobs. Oh. <laughs> that was. Uh, we got to give a. Uh, I'm glad we saw Brad Johnson. I hope you can hear me. Um, we have to give you a shout out. We've been shouting you out. Yeah. And um, you're absolutely incredible. Um, I got to talk to you. Maybe there's something you guys know what I'm thinking, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm absolutely. thinking, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's what we do at Ambassador. Is yeah. we honor people like yourselves um, who are epic to me. Um, who have done so much, you you know, Alvin, I'm, uh, thank you. Uh, and I want to say, first of all, thank you, Frank, for an amazing shoot. Amazing. Looking forward to continuing. I'm grateful to Alvin to in, for introducing us. As yeah, well as, uh, as you'll be, you guys will see the rest of the editorial shoot, um, if not tonight, tomorrow. We normally do it like tomorrow. That's how we do it. So tonight's always just like a cover reveal for our viewers and stuff, but and thank you, Stephen, for the grooming. Um, but I just want to say to you guys, I'm so honored to know you both, to know Alvin, his wife. Um, there you go. Cool. That's not me. That's 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 thanks. That's, that's thanks to Roth, Rothman's Men's and Bourbon and Bulldogs. <clears throat> they they furnished the clothes. It was awesome. <clears throat> Look at them. You guys, like you know. Remember, um, um, you guys like like a TV show right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like the, the black moonlighting or something. Wow. <laughs> let's, let's, call, let's call my agent IMG yes. up and let him know. <laughs> are, are you guys you, you here? here? You here? Right? Only the directors. Yeah. No, you guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for everything. Um, uh, uh, uh oh, Paul. Okay, sometimes Paul will keep pulling up these, pulling up more shots. But I was to say thank you guys, everybody, uh, for joining us tonight. Um, Alvin, my friend, uh, continue and and Gwen continued success. Um, you know, and, and to you, you have a great night. Nice. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the magazine. It's Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you. All Thank the past you. issues have been really fun to, to Humbled see. and honored to be on it. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. I am it was a fantastic I'm... experience. The whole day was a fantastic experience. Yeah, so the whole thank team you, was great. Well, thank fun. you guys. Appreciate I had it. A great, we all had a great time. Um, I want to thank everybody uh for joining us tonight. And um Trisha, thank you. Uh, was this fun? It was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, hearing it, hearing you, hearing can't you guys listen? Listen, like I said, go take your behinds. <laughs> you better take your behinds to Albert and friends. <laughs> this couple, you can just be that when you walk in that door. Oh, <laughs> by the way, um, you know, listen, I'm gonna spill. Hey, Steven. Yeah. We're going to go up there Sunday, right? We're going Sunday. We're going up for Sunday brunch. All, All right. right. Come on down. No, we coming. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. We're making a reservation. We're making a reservation tonight. All right. All right. Please. Make a reservation. Okay. Brunch and biscuits. <laughs> Rum and biscuits, y'all. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Anyway, thank you guys so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. I don't want it to end, but it has to end. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you so much. Look at this cover. Look at incredible. Can't wait to premiere it on Ambassador Digital Magazine. Uh, you ain't go. This is not. You have not gone anywhere, uh, Alvin. <laughs> this is like not a comeback. This is just a continuation. You're very kind. Thank you. Thank you. hundred percent. Uh, and so, uh, and thank you, Gwen, lovely Gwen, and your beautiful children um, as well, because they have to put up with you guys. <laughs> thank you. They help out. They do a lot. And thank Shout you out to the kids and my nieces. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 um, 
And I want to say to my, 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 my partner in crime who's back there, I don't know if he can peek his head in. Paul, if you're around, he always peeks his, he always says, hey. <laughs> He's like, hey. <laughs> he says, hey. Okay, not tonight. Okay. <laughs> there, here he comes. Hey. 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 <laughs> Beautiful cover. Nice work, everybody. Thank you. He does that very quickly. All right. So listen, thank you guys so much for joining. And um, I see you, Shell and uh, Gary, Tara. Once again, I'll be calling you Brad. Uh, and we'll talk soon. So I see you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, enjoy your Valentine's weekend. If you have a Valentine, yes. enjoy them. Okay. Thank you. And by the way, go to Alvin and Friends. You get a free drink. First drink. <laughs> Not a bad deal. And you get to see those beautiful people. Have a good night. Thank everyone for joining. Go in love. Thank you. And live your life with passion. Take Thank care. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.